The Vision High School Sports Beat is brought to you by the nine locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships from Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai, Kia, and Nissan, with locations in Webster, Henrietta, Greece, Penfield, Fairport, and Canandaigua, online at visionauto.com. Hi everyone and thanks for joining us with the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. Every week at this time we take a comprehensive look at sports in Section 5. We begin with our honor roll of high school teams. At number 3, the Irondequoit girls basketball team is 13-2. Leading the way is Savannah Crosetti. who scored 20 against Brighton and 22 against Pittsburgh Menden while joining the 1000 Career Point Club. At number two, North Star Christian Boys Basketball. The Knights snuck up on us. They're very quietly 15-1. Mike Jones scored 17 against Finney, and their 1,000-point scorer, Simeon Hurd. And number one, it goes to McQuaid Hockey again. The Knights are 16-2 and, and knocked off the defending state champion, Messina, 3-2. Connor Raymond stopped 27 shots. Craig McCabe scored a hat trick in a win over Salmon River. Which brings us to Greece Athena High School, where one of our best teams resides. The Greece Athena Trojans are undefeated and the most popular team in town. But they're going to have to finish up the hard way, thanks to the Sarkis effect. Here's Kim Burnson. It was supposed to be just another game night for the Greece Athena boys basketball team. A hard fought win on the road, an undefeated record, but it was a win no one was celebrating. Because with the victory came an irreplaceable loss. That night, Coach Jim Johnson watched his senior and star point guard, Jay Sarkis, suffer a season-ending injury. Well, he uh, went, drove to the basket, and their player went up to try to block the shot, and they, were, they fouled him, was, uh, and he landed into the wall. When he got up, he was kind of shaking his wrist, because he made the basket, so he had, actually was going to shoot one foul shot. He got to the foul line, and he was like, I go, Jay, are you okay? And then all of a sudden, apparently his adrenaline, because he had broken it, but he didn't realize it, and then it just bent. And I was like, oh boy, that's not good. Coach wasn't the only one who knew something was wrong. My, my heart went into my stomach, and I was just trying to be calm. And, you know, maybe it's a dislocation. And he was calm and um, got into the ambulance. And then the paramedics said, you know, I think it's broken. And I'm trying to, like, you know, be a little positive. And, Jay lost it and got very upset, and I just, my heart was breaking for him. You know, you see, your, you see your child hurt, and you see his whole world crashing in, and your heart just breaks for him. Because at that moment, it's his whole life, and he doesn't know that in 25 years, he'll look back at this as a different experience that helped him grow and mature, but right now, his whole world is just, you know, bottomed out. Sarkis, now in good spirits, knows his role on the team has changed. While he can't contribute on the court, he plans to support his teammates in other ways. I plan to also be kind of a player coach to help my coach and my players because I know like how to react with well them on the court and off the court. But I mean, I'm going like, to boost everyone's confidence, make sure they're all playing good and the ex expectation level we can be playing to. And um, he's going to make them be focused and he's going to make them work hard and you know make them think you guys can do this. We're a team. We've been together since third, fourth and fifth grade. Um, and just hopefully get through sectionals and even get into the first round of states. I feel, I feel bad, but they'll, they'll be good now. They should have a good season. I'll be here with them the rest of the season. Now, despite the injury to Jay Sarkis, Coach Jim Johnson says they have the talent moving forward. Well, you know, certainly we've got to make adjustments, and that we're going to do that. It's a good group of kids, and they're resilient. And, uh, you know, I think we'll move forward. Uh, you know, we're certainly going to miss him. He's a great player. You don't replace him. In the first game back since the shakeup, Coach recognized an underlying teachable moment that would help raise his team's spirits. I told him that, you know, that certainly right now we're all going to feel different emotions. And I think you know, be able to take that, but then 
you know, in life, there's adversity. And, you know, this is a good teaching point for all of us. You know, we got to find a way, you know, and we still have a lot of talent. There's no reason we can't still accomplish the goals we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of life's secret is, is to be able to overcome obstacles. Athena went on to defeat Brockport that night, 80 to 51. The Trojans are undefeated without Sarkis, too. For the Vision High School Sports Beat, I'm Kim Burnson. When we return, equal opportunity cheerleading, and later on the Rochester Relays, when the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back to the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now for our honor roll of high school athletes. At number three this week, in the pool, Nicole Gelb broke two Harley Allendale Columbia records in the 50 and the 100 freestyle as the Wolves swam away with the Genesee Niagara Intersectionals meet. Number two off the board, Brighton Scott Lazeroff broke the section's 11 dive record while winning the Class B sectional crown. It was a record that he'd set at the counties. His teammate Corey Knees was second. And at number one, she'll wind up with over 2,000 career points. Reese Odyssey girls basketball star Carissa Birthright scored 42 against Olympia, breaking her own school record. Which brings us to RIT, the site of the Section 5 cheerleading championships, where they're mixing it up this year. There are some familiar things associated with the culture shock that is the Section 5 Cheerleading Championships. A packed house at RIT for starters, over-the-top reactions to the performances, and the usual suspects contending for championship honors. Greece Athena, hot off its victory at the Rochester Cheer and Dance Championships the week before, finished second to Fairport, which repeated after winning a title in the fall. But there is something new. There was, for the first time this year, a sectional title awarded to the best mixed team. Teams with boys. When Mike McQuillan isn't cheering for Leroy, he plays on the football team. Mike is the place kicker. Next year, he'll have to choose between cheering for and playing on that football team. In all, there were 10 teams competing in the co-ed division. Honey A Falls Lima and Eastridge field two boys each. It actually has been better than having just a team of girls. They seem to be closer with the guys. No kidding. Now, that's a surprising answer to me. That, in what way? Well, for one, I have a sister and brother on the team. So that even makes it closer because it's almost like family. Well, they are family, but the whole team becomes family. But they just joke around more, and the guys tend to make it so it's not such a catty team. And it becomes a little easier to manage for you. Yeah, definitely. What's it like having your brother on the squad? Um, it's kind of it's kind of weird. He just got pulled up, but it's fun. But sometimes we fight. But but it's fun. I like having him on the team because he's someone who I'm really close with, and I can tell everything. Like if something's going wrong, I just go to him, and it's really nice having him on the team. Finally. Cool, Brennan. How's this gone for you? It's gone really good. It's just like new because it's my first year cheering. The addition of the guys adds a unique element to the routines, which is why they now compete separately. They add a whole new element. They, they give a male attitude, they give the male effort, and they give strength that girls just sometimes don't have. They're very strong. Define the male attitude. Oh boy. It depends on the day. Um, <laughs> they're very hardworking. They want to do well. They want to work just as hard as the girls. I was a gymnast before I started cheerleading, so I started building skills in a, like a gym with and then um, I started cheering my freshman year so you know without another outlet it's nice to have this don't you think yes it is um, it's pretty much my whole life now I love doing what I do 
plus there's not quite the stigma surrounding boys performing with the girls on a high school cheerleading squad. Some people agree with it and some people don't, but you know, I try to not think about what others think of me and I just, you know, I, I try to be proud that I'm a part of something and that I'm accepted. Tony flying is really unique and I mean, I guess it should be open to guys, you know, I guess it's like this is a start where it could eventually be a co-ed sport where you wouldn't have to register for it to be like registering as a guy on a girl team. It makes us unique because um, I guess you don't, like they are just as good as everyone else, they're just as skilled. So we stand out because they're just like every other member of the team, they're not on there just because they're a guy, they're on there because of their skill. The Cougars made a little history here, pulling down the first Section 5 championship for a co-ed cheerleading squad. You have a separate, you're, you're in a separate class now because of their presence, do you like that? I do and I don't. Um, it, it gives them um, equality because now the boys are represented. The boys stand for something where before you were all mixed in together. But I do like being, you know, with your classification, class B, class A, when we used to be like that. Penfield, Geneva, Palmac, Avon, and East Rochester also won Section 5 cheerleading crowns. Kim joins us from the break room with our Making the Grade nominee next. Later on, it's the creatively competitive Rochester Relays, when the Vision Automotive Group's high school sports beat continues. Welcome back to the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. It's time now for our Making the Grade segment, where we recognize athletes for their performance both on and off the field. Our honoree this week is Lena Kaufman of Pittsburgh Sutherland, where her hard work in school has her making the grade. Though only a freshman, Lena is a two-sport varsity athlete. Last year as an eighth grader, she was called up to her varsity basketball team for sectionals. The team went on to win states that year. She hopes to help them return this season with her role as shooting guard. While her accomplishments on the court are impressive, her golf swing also talks a big game. As the daughter of former LPGA pro Lisa Scally, golf runs deep in the family. Lena was presented with a trophy sponsored by the Downey family for winning sectionals this year and was crowned player of the year in her age group. When the spring hits, she'll prepare to head to states this June. In her free time, Lena volunteers in her community. She works through her local church visiting soup kitchens and helping out with activities in need of assistance. Nominated for her drive, whether on the court or on the golf course, this week Sutherland's Lena Kaufman is making the grade. If you have an idea for our Making the Grade segment, we want to hear from you. Send your nominations to info at classywolf.com. I'm Kim Burnson, and here's Bill with a look at our Section 5 calendar. The Section 5 ice hockey tournament begins on Tuesday with some first round play and games in Class B, sites and times to be determined. Tuesday also features one last regular season test for Bruce Athena. See how the Sarkis effect bears at home against Hilton. It's a 645 tip off. The big girls basketball game of the week is the rematch of a contest we featured last month. Penfield is at undefeated Rush Henrietta. The Comets snapped a 30 plus game home court win streak by Penfield last time out. Chance for some redemption at our age. That game's at 715. Thursday brings the Section 5 Indoor Track and Field Championships for the two large classes. RIT hosts, they'll get it going at 6 o'clock. Some of the Section 5 events you should consider taking in this week. Back to the track in our All Sports High School Game of the Week when the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back and thanks for watching the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. It's a one-of-a-kind track and field event, the Rochester Relays, and it's our All Sports High School Game of the Week. There was no room on the indoor track and field calendar for the Rochester Relays last year, but they're back for 2015. This meet is unlike every other meet that we've ever done. Um, the, hurt, the, uh, the relays that they have are designed to get multiple people involved in something that they may not be involved in otherwise. For instance, the, um, the sprint medley is an 800, which is a kind of a distance event, and then a 200, 200, 400. So you have sprinters and distance kids working together. This is something different. You kind of looking forward to it? Yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity just to have fun and lots of, I mean, it looks a lot of fun. I'm going to run the sprint medley and 
uh, several of the relays too. Everything is about team at this meet. There are no actual individual winners. The field events are scored as a team total of the top two finishers. So Rush Henrietta won the boys high jump, Penfield took the boys pole vault, Gates Chilai claimed the girls triple jump even though its best finisher was third. But the real creativity is saved for the running events. Today we have a nice uh, two times four by two relay where every kid gets to run 200 meters twice. It's a novelty race, it's not like a normal race. Kids have a little bit of fun and it's a little expanded normal. They're sprinters and they're just doubling up. The girls' 8x200 turned into a two-team competition between Penfield and Mercy. Well, I've never done a sprinting race before, so this was a nice break from distance events, so it was really fun to be able to go and just go all out right away and it was really nice so yeah having to do it twice it's kind of a distance race yeah. isn't it well like since I have a little bit more endurance from distance events it was like fun for me to be able to go all out but then still mentally prepare myself for the second lap and be able to go again senior MM Ikpot ran the fourth and eighth leg of the relay and clinched the victory for the Monarchs I thought it was going to be like pretty simple, like a little practice, but after like after I ran my first one, I was already like so dead, and I realized I had to do it again, so it was like pretty tough, and like having to give your all for that last lap is like crazy. It's that dead time in between kind of kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's like you think you have all this time, but like before you know it, you're like running again. In the boys' 8 by 200, Edison led most of the way before being passed by Victor in the final lap. We, are, we did our thing. We kind of slipped up at the end, so I don't know. We still ran our best, and, you know, Victor got the best of us. So, Do you like the event? It's a little unusual, isn't it? This was my first time doing an event, but it was fun while it lasted. Then there's the girls and boys 4 by 55 meter relay shuttle. They set up on opposite ends of the 55. Um, the gun is, fires and one runs to the other end. As soon as they cross the line, the other one runs back the other way and they keep going. You get four of them and then they take that time of all four kids running together. And it's a very unique race. Wilson won the girls' race. It's like a big team effort. I feel like, you know, we could all join in and have fun. Tell me about going down that last stretch. It was tense because, you know, you don't know if the person's going to be in front of you and back of you, so it was nice. But you led, a, you led going into that last lap and you brought it home. Yeah. <laughs> Quaid was the winner on the boys' side. I normally don't do the 55. I'm a hurdler, 300 runner, and I do the relays. Um, but we were doing it to warm up for the SMR. We're doing that later on tonight. So what was your reaction when uh, Coach told you that threw you into this thing? I mean, it, it, I told him, he said it was a good warm-up, so we just kind of went along with it and just did what he said to do. The Rochester Relays took the one big social event feeling of an indoor track meet to a new dimension. It was a nice break prior to reaching the serious season. And the whole really aspect of the roster relays is really what it's all about. You know, they're going to be coming into the championship season coming up at the end of the month. So uh, over spring break we have sectionals. It's going to be really exciting for them. So it's a little bit of exhale before they re-gear back up for the big stuff. The Rush Henrietta boys and the Penfield girls won the team titles at Brockport. It was Batavia and Greece Olympia winning at RIT. 
We'd like to thank our partners at the Vision Automotive Group. They make the sports beat possible. As do you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.